This is the Your Career Story Podcast, and you're listening to episode 50, How to Sell Yourself in an Interview. Welcome to Your Career Story Podcast, a show that's designed for rock star professionals looking for that extra booster shot of confidence in their careers. Whether you're trying to get clarity on a job transition, want some work-life balance inspiration, or need a strategy to snag that promotion or raise, this podcast is for you. I'm your host, Jenna Viviano, ex-Wall Streeter turned startup junkie who now coaches hundreds of clients, empowering them to take back control of the job search and land their dream job. So sit back, grab a glass of wine, and prepare yourself for your weekly boost of career confidence. Hey guys, welcome back to another week, another episode, and we have hit number 50, 5 I know that for myself, when I started this podcast last year, I didn't know if it was going to be something I really enjoyed, if it was going to be something that I was going to keep up. But for me, it's been such a joy to get to talk about different subjects related to work, to invite on new guests, and really just to see what you guys were interested in and what was really compelling um, and helpful for you as you go into your careers. And so um, what I found is just doing some research and hearing from people who reach out to me and that listen to the podcast and then reach out via LinkedIn or email or wherever that may be. So if you do listen to this podcast and we're not connected on LinkedIn, please be sure to hop over to LinkedIn and connect with me. I would love to meet you. But what I'm finding is that a lot of you really love the workshop style podcast episodes that I have been kind of doing since the start of the year and really diving into some subjects that you care about as it relates to your work and succeeding and getting promoted and changing career. So thank you so much for listening wherever you are listening to in the world. I get some of you that'll reach out to me and say, I've listened to literally every single episode that you've ever done. And that is hugely flattering and kind of crazy all at the same time. So wherever you are in the world, I would so love to be connected with you on LinkedIn. And in the spirit of celebrating 50 episodes, I want to share with you kind of four of my top favorite episodes that we've done since we started last year. And so the first one is actually episode 10. It's called How Sabbath Can Change Your Career. And that's with one of me interviewing my good friend, Christy McClelland. So whether you're religious or not, this is a really great episode that talks about rest and work. And Christy speaks and she teaches from, she's a Bible teacher who teaches from Middle Eastern perspective and and teaches from the understanding the Jewish culture first, and then talking about um, how that relates to the Bible. But Sabbath specifically is so relevant whether you are religious or not. Um, so I would really recommend that if you are interested in learning, how do I do this whole rest and work balance thing? This is a really great episode. So that's episode 10. Episode 21 is another, um, one of our most popular episodes. And it's just my story. I get a lot of questions from people like, how did you get to where you got to? And so I just did a whole podcast episode on that. And it's called How to Confidently Navigate a Total Career Overhaul, My Story from Wall Street to Career Coach. So I tell all the ups and the downs and the craziness that goes into um, me starting my career on Wall Street and then ending up here in Nashville, Tennessee, um, doing having a career coaching practice and business and growing that to be multiple six-figure your business. So um, that's episode 21. And then episode 33, or sorry, I'm sorry, 34 through 43, the, you know, palindrome of numbers, <laughs> um, was our Enneagram at Work series. So we recorded this last year. It was kind of to close out 2019. I invited my friend, Lauren Gray, who actually ironically was our very first guest on the podcast. So she was episode one and then helped close out 2019. And I brought her on to talk about the Enneagram at work. And so what we did was we did this bonus bingeable series, go back and listen to it, all about how to use the personality typing system, system, the Enneagram for your work relationships and how you show up and understanding yourself and how you show up at work. So this was a really fun episode. My recommend or episodes, my recommendation is if you're going back and re-listening to some of these, start with your number first. And if you don't know about your number, um, if you go back into those episodes, there are some show notes that will link you to, hey, this is how to figure out your type. We recommend reading a specific book. Um, And we also have an Enneagram at work guide also that we recommend getting to download and to hear all those fun things. So that was a really fun series for me. So I love the Enneagram, super obsessed with it. It's a very Nashvillian thing. Um, so that's and that's episodes 34 through 43. And then finally, this is a more recent episode. So it's episode 44, where I got to talk about one of my clients, 
um, very popular episode, but how my client increased her salary from $90,000 to $210,000. So um, in it, I talk about how she was able to do that, how she was also able to move across continents, and really how she entered into the Recruit the Employer program and how we helped her pivot herself. And she is just an amazing woman. She is currently in London and was able to make a massive pivot. So I'm very proud of her. Um, but those are my most favorite episodes, whether it was what you guys deemed as best episodes, and then also ones that I've personally found really enriching for myself. So um, if you have been listening to this podcast for a while, we would love if you would review us um, before we get into the meat of this. Um, I have to ask. And the reason why is because we loved hearing what you are loving from the, these episodes. So if you give us a review, that really, really helps us. I used to feel a little bit of shame, quite frankly, being honest and transparent about asking for reviews. It felt a little bit presumptuous or forward. And it's kind of perfect to be talking about it when we're talking about how to actually sell yourself in an interview. It's the same kind of brain space that we get into. Um, but my marketing manager, Sarah, reminded me that Oprah asks for reviews and ratings on her podcast and her things. And so if she does it, we will do it as well. So if you have been enjoying these podcast episodes, giving us reviews and rating us gives us the opportunity to share with more people and to invite really cool guests onto the show as well. So if we'd love if you would review us. All right. I think that's all of the housekeeping things that I wanted to cover today. So let's talk all about how to sell yourself in an interview. So this is what I want to talk about today. I'm going to break it up into three parts. So if you are listening while you're on your treadmill, maybe you want to take some notes in your phone. Um, maybe you want to listen to this later. If you're driving to work, do not be writing while you are driving, please. <laughs> so this is going to be a jam-packed episode, but I'm really going to divide it into three parts. So the first is what does it actually mean to sell yourself? So we're going to go through some common misconceptions about what to sell yourself actually looks like. And then I'm going to give you some ideas of how to actually think about selling. Then we're going to be talking about why selling yourself is important in an interview or elsewhere. And we're going to go through a ton of different proof points as to why this is super important, specifically for you ladies that are listening. This is going to be so, so, so important. And a lot of you are probably already squeamish about not wanting to do it. <laughs> and then I'm going to share with you some tips on how to do it in a non-sleazy way. So let's get started. So what does it mean to actually sell yourself? So in order for us to understand what it does mean, we also need to address the common misconceptions about what it's not. So when, when I tell people like you need to learn how to sell yourself, or when we hear the word sell, we usually have these negative connotations, right? We usually think it means being pushy, being sleazy. We usually think of a used car salesman, like that typical stereotype in our brain that if we're selling ourselves, we're being pushy, we're being sleazy, we're being inauthentic, we're being maybe dishonest. All of these things that just, oh, we just hate all the feelings, right? We also feel like we're maybe forcing someone to do something that they don't want to do. So selling yourself feels like very exposed, right? Very vulnerable, but almost in a not great way. <laughs> and oftentimes we can feel like if we're, if the feeling that we have or the common misconception is that we are spamming people. By being too forward and selling yourself is just, it doesn't, it's not congruent with people who want to be perceived as authentic, honest, genuine, um, and just somebody who like is proud of their accomplishments, but they don't want to really sell themselves. The other thing to remember is that a lot of people think that whenever you're selling yourself, you're automatically going to circumvent what somebody's going to do and force them again, like I said before, force them to do something they don't want to do, the other person. And that honestly, at the end of the day, is not true. We need to rewire our brains about how we think about the word sell. Because <laughs> the reality is we're being sold to all day long and we also are selling all day long. So I'll give you a perfect example. So I am selling when I'm convincing my fiance Brent, like for instance, we were just in a grocery store last weekend and I was, you know, moving around the grocery store and he was picking some things out and I really love the idea of having some frozen pizza in my freezer. You guys might be laughing at me, but I really think it's valuable to have just in case you have a crazy day at work and I just need to pop something in. And that's the only thing that I really have time for. We were getting the organic kind, the cauliflower, you know, crust, whatever. And he saw it in my cart. And so I would had to go through the process of selling him and convincing him and having a conversation with him about why it was a great idea. I was selling him in that moment. 
right? So we are always selling. So we need to start thinking about it from like, this is just a normal part of life. Selling is a normal part of life. Quite frankly, I feel like selling is just having opinions and then expressing those opinions. So selling does not have to be some crazy, awkward, uncomfortable thing. And I, what I love is there's this book and I read it when I was actually in sales. And this book is written by Daniel Pink and it's called To Sell is Human. And I think that the title, I would really recommend getting the book, whether you're in sales or not in sales, because I think it helps you reframe how you think about selling. Selling is, if you just replace the word selling with serving, it makes things feel a lot better. How to serve in an interview, right? Instead of how to sell yourself in an interview, how to serve via your own talents and gifts in an interview. That's how I want you to reframe that notion around selling. It is not a terrible thing. And here's a really great quote that I took from um, his book. So Daniel Pink's book, To Sell as Human. He said, finally, at every opportunity you have to move someone from traditional sales, like convincing a prospect to buy a new computer system to non-sales selling, like persuading your daughter to do her homework. Again, we're always selling. Be sure you can answer the two questions at the core of genuine service. If the person you're selling to agrees to buy, will his, his or her life improve? When your interaction is over, will the world be a better place than when you began? If the answer to either of these questions is no, you are doing something wrong. So for those of you that are, I love that quote, right? It helps us really reframe like those two questions again are, if if the person you're selling to agrees to buy, will his or her life improve? And when your interaction is over, will the world be a better place than when you began? So let's put this into the context of actually um, interviews, right? So interviewing, ultimately, the the goal is to get a job. So I want you to be thinking about it. If the person, the interviewer, you are selling yourself to agrees to hire you, will their company be better off? That's a question you need to ask yourself. So if you're applying to the job and you're going through the motion, you actually probably inherently believe that. You just need to tell yourself that's really what you're doing, right? So if the interviewer you're selling to agrees to hire you to buy, will his or her life improve? Will the company's life improve? Will, Will you make their life easier? right? And when your interaction is over, so when you leave that organization, will the world, will that organization be a better place than when you began? If the answers to those questions are yes, you are not doing something in a sleazy way. Now, you may not be thinking that what you have to offer really is that valuable. And that is your first problem. Go listen to some other episodes that I've done where we talk about mindset around your career. Because I think a lot of us really approach our career specifically as women as just like, here's a bunch of tasks I can do. Pay me for those tasks. That's a transaction. When really at the end of the day, you need to be remembering that you're providing value to a company. You are the asset. They are not the asset. You are the asset. (laughs) And it is an exchange, right? There is an exchange going on. And that's why you have to sell yourself. You have to serve the company in order to get payment. And the more you serve, the more options you have to negotiate. So this is, so hopefully that frames up a little bit about where we're going, what it means to actually sell yourself. It's not being pushy. It's not being sleazy. It's not spamming people. It's not forcing people to do something that they don't want to do. It's authentically showing up and serving. That's what you need to be thinking about. And honestly, if we just put it into plainer terms, you are always selling. So now that we've established that, let's talk about why selling yourself is actually important in an interview and beyond. So I think a lot of people will think, and this may be you, so if this resonates with you, you can put your hand up in the car where you are at, or if you're on the treadmill, I think a lot of us think that we don't, that if we were good enough, we wouldn't need to sell ourselves, right? So if we were really, really good enough, people would just get it. You know, it's kind of that build it and they will come methodology, You shouldn't have to sell yourself to succeed. We have this kind of notion in the back of our head. We're like, who told you that, right? Like if they should just assume that if I'm good enough, so I must not be good enough, that's why they can't get it. So I shouldn't have to sell myself. The reality is that's a lie. Nobody that's been like worldly version of success, and that's probably a totally different episode where we can talk about what success actually looks like and what that means. But from the worldly view of success of like going up through the ranks in in a company or going up through the ranks in your career and, you know, getting more responsibility, maybe acquiring more wealth, all of that kind of stuff. That's what I'm referring to right now is you have to sell yourself to succeed. You have to put yourself out there. You cannot just expect to be great. I have a lot of people that will come through the door to me and maybe they're really technical and they have a lot of giftings that way, but they have zero idea how to sell themselves versus somebody who knows how to sell themselves has decent capabilities 
they're going to get the job over the person that has all of the keep all of, all of the extensive technical capabilities. Now you might be saying that's sad. That's not fair. And my answer to that is pick up your pants and we're like put up in your put on your big girl britches and we need to get over it because it's the reality of the world, <laughs> right? Um, I love you all listening. You know I'm firm but kind because the reality is you can't just expect people to get it. We talk in my recruit the employer program a lot with my women about connecting the dots. You have to almost treat an interviewer like they are dumb. We respect interviewers. We love them. But the reality is we have to connect the dots for them so that they understand where we come in and provide value. It is not foolish. It doesn't mean you're not good. It just means you got to make it easier for someone to understand. You have to simplify, especially in this world where we have so many distractions. So I even think about myself in my business. I fought with this um, lie that if I was good enough, people would just assume, like I've built my, you know, my brand for how many years now, people would just get it. Right. And that to some extent is true, but I also have to talk about what I offer more often. I have to show why that's going to provide value for people because otherwise, if I don't do that, they're not going to get it. Right. So I have to talk about what I have to offer because if I don't talk about what I have to offer, I can't just assume someone's going to or just rely on that person going to my website, digging around when they have a zillion other things going on in their life. So for you, and which is why you probably hear me talking about my program a lot more, because I believe it really can provide value to the right types of women who are ambitious, who have an entrepreneurial spirit, who really want to advance themselves in their career and need to help help with the personal branding part of it. Like I know that I can provide value to them, but I wasn't really talking about it that much. And so my business coach helped me reframe that for my brain and to then talk about it more on the podcast and in my content that I was producing because I was also like you, I was believing the lie that I shouldn't have to sell myself anymore. The reality is, is if we think about it as serving, we're actually providing value. So for you in an interview, remember you have to connect the dots for them. So we need to excuse that lie and move in with some other parts of the puzzle. Let me guess. If you're listening to this podcast, you're probably not looking for any job. You're looking for the right job. And the right job is not at your current company. You're tired of feeling underpaid, overworked, and like your career is in the hands of the employer. You're ready to make some moves, but you're overwhelmed by all of the options. You don't know how to sell yourself and you have a nagging feeling that your lack of confidence is keeping you from success, not to mention negotiating the amount you're worth. If this sounds like you and you're a mid to senior level career woman who makes over $100,000, we have the four-step solution just for you. Our signature program, Recruit the Employer, is designed to help women leaders get clarity on what they want to do, market to their dream jobs, and negotiate thousands more. Using a personal branded approach, we equip you with the tools to sell yourself in a non-sleazy way, think like a C-suite leader, and ultimately take back control of your career. To apply, head on over to www.genevaviano.com slash apply. Over the course of 12 weeks, you'll network with other female leaders at similar stages, learn how to double your salary, and solidify your career story. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention, the dreaded resume and LinkedIn profile? Yeah, we do that for you. Because of the intimate nature of this program and limited spots, we are very selective about who we invite into the program. To see if you'd be a good fit, again, head on over to www.genoveviano.com slash apply to apply to recruit the employer today. We can't wait to support you. All right, back to the episode. The other thing that I want, want you to remember whenever you are selling yourself, no one taught you how to do this, which is why people like myself exist, <laughs> career coaches, right? Your college did not equip you to, unfortunately, like nine times out of 10, your college did not equip you for the workforce and finding a job, which is highly ironic. And again, could be another podcast episode where I rant about universities and how they're not equipping people to actually get jobs, even though they spent thousands of dollars um, on all their education. So you need to give yourself some grace if you are not good at this at first, because the reality is no one taught you how to do it. And it takes practice. It's another skill set like Excel or Excel modeling or financial analysis or some kind of technical UX design skill. Like it is the same thing. It may not feel like it. It feels like you have to know what to do, but the reality is, is no one taught you. So have some grace with yourself if you're not good at this at first and you feel some friction coming up. This is even hard for people that are salespeople that come to me or people that are used to branding and selling products and they're used to that and they still have a hard time doing it themselves for themselves. So if that's you, don't shame yourself. Okay. So the other thing is 
What I love about why this is so important to sell yourself in an interview is it gives you the opportunity to present your accomplishments in a matter of fact way. It allows you to pitch yourself, right? So if you're selling yourself in an interview, that's essentially the entire interview is an opportunity for you to pitch what you have to offer. Similarly to then if you were going to, you know, do a pitch for work, right? You were going into the C-suite and you were telling them about this new project you want to implement on your team. It's the same idea. You're going into pitch. The only thing difference is the product that you're pitching or the service that you're pitching is you. And that goes back to reframing your mind that you are the asset. You are the person that is able to provide value. And we've talked about this before, but you're either going to make a company money, you're going to save a company money, or you're going to make someone's life easier. And so when you think about pitching yourself, think about where you in your career right now, if you're looking to transition and you're applying to positions, which one of those three buckets do you fit in most with what you're able to provide in terms of value, making money, saving money, making someone's life easier. Just think about that, write it down, journal through it. That's really going to help you start to get into the frame of mind of selling yourself because that's the value prop right there. Right? So selling yourself allows you to, to present your accomplishments and allows you the opportunity to prove your worth through the things that you've done before. The other thing that I love about selling yourself in an interview is that it helps build up your confidence. When I start working with people and they've never gone, they haven't gone through an interview in a long time, which is oftentimes what happens with people who come, come to me. They maybe have not done an interview in a really long time. They haven't really had to try to find a job. It's kind of fell into their laps and they really want to take a proactive approach to the process. Cool. Awesome. One of the things that we have to practice though is making sure that they know how to tell their story and know what value they have to offer to a company. Once they know that and they start practicing it in interviews that are, I call they're more like low, low risk interviews. So interviews for things that maybe they're not super, super excited about, but they're getting their kind of like their sea legs back on interviewing. It helps build their confidence. If you sell yourself and you start practicing, talking about your value proposition and how you can provide value to a company in a matter of fact, humble way, because that is possible. It's not mutually exclusive. You start to really build up your confidence and my clients start to build up their confidence and knowing that they are capable and actually have something of value to give to the world. Because I think so many of us actually don't necessarily believe that we have value to bring to the world. And that makes me really sad. And so what I want you to be doing when you're th- preparing for an interview is understand what value do I have to offer to this organization? How am I going to make their life easier? How am I going to make them more money? How have I done it in the past to prove that I could do it for them too, right? So selling yourself builds your confidence. It allows you to share your value proposition. And ultimately, you are showing what's in it for them. The biggest issue that I see with people when they go into interviews, besides a lack of confidence, which should be built up over time and should be something you're continually working on, by the way, (laughs) is that they don't think about what's in it for the employers. They're only thinking about what's in it for Emmy, for me, right? So when someone asks you the question, why do you want to move to a different company? Like, why do you want to move here? It's really, really not asking you, why do you want to move here? It's like, why do you want to work for us? It's about us. And that may feel like, oh, it feels so sleazy and slimy. But the reality is you would do the exact same thing if you were hiring somebody, (laughs) right? And maybe some of you have. You want to know what's in it for me. What is this person, if I bring in and I try and train them and invest time and money into them, what are they going to be able to do for us? And so when you get asked that question, I want you to really think through the answer. Why do I, what's in it for them if I come work for them? So yes, of course, when you get asked the question, why do you want to move from where you are? And why do you want to move here? One of my recommendations of how to answer that question is, yeah, so I've had an amazing experience working at XYZ company for XYZ years. I'm looking to move on to really utilize my skill set and help a company thrive. Um, and it looks like your organization is really focused on XYZ. I really believe that my past experience is going to show you that I have the capabilities to bring value to your team and help you re- achieve the results that you just mentioned. So it's really about ultimately landing on them. You're breezing past what you're going to get from it, which you probably are picking it because you're going to have professional growth opportunities. You're excited about maybe some of the diversity inclusion initiatives that they have going on. Maybe you really believe in what the company is trying to do. Those things are all true. You can mention them. Just make sure you don't leave out what's in it for the company. Another quote by Daniel Pink, he said, to sell well is to convince someone else to be part, to part with resources. So to sell yourself well is to convince the employer to part with some of their resources, right? You are considered an asset. 
assets cost money, you are, they have to use your resources, right? So to sell well is to convince someone else to be to part with resources, not to deprive that person, but to leave him or her better off in the end. So for you, by you working there, you have to really truly internalize that you are going to leave this company better off in the end. And so when you enter in an interview, you are already in the mindset that like, they're going to get so much value out of working with me or hiring me. I'm going to be able to do so many great things for them. You have to first believe that to convince anybody else. And we're going to get into that in a couple minutes. The other thing is if you don't sell, and this is why selling is so important, somebody else will make assumptions about you. Someone else will come to conclusions that maybe you want them to come to or don't want them to come to. Most often, it's what you don't want them to come to. So if you're not selling yourself, you're selling yourself short. If you're not serving in an interview, if you're not sharing how you're going to provide value, you're selling yourself short. And ultimately, if you are selling yourself in an interview, you have the ability now to negotiate more. Because if you really are able to show the value that you're going to produce and how that's invaluable to them, then that allows you to negotiate more upfront and over the long term. It's you're always thinking when you shift your mindset away from like, here's what the market's paying for this, which is important. We definitely need to evaluate that. There's tools for that. We don't want to be asking for 250K if really it's only 150K across this across the street, right? But I think that if we're able to present what we've been able to accomplish and then frame that and package that up in a way that shows and is compelling that we're going to actually be able to produce more money for the company, or you're going to be able to save them more money, or you're just going to make their life easier. That helps them understand the value that you're going to be able to bring, and it helps you negotiate more. So when you are selling yourself in an interview, the very end of the day, from the very beginning of you having that conversation to the very end of those that interview process, ultimately, your goal is to eventually negotiate more money, which is why you're trying to sell yourself, right? to actually get paid what you're worth. We hear that phrase all the time nowadays, but this is one of the best ways to do it is to really get down your sales pitch, if you will, on how to sell yourself. So let's talk about some really practical ways to do this in a non-sleazy way. So how do you sell yourself in a non-sleazy way? So the first thing that I mentioned before was belief that you have a right to be there, <laughs> that you have a right to show up into that room, that you have a right to share your story, and that you have a right to be in the room where it happens, to quote a Hamilton song, right? A lot of us, I feel like we say that we believe that we deserve to be there, but we're not innately trying to move that forward. There is um, like a life coach principle um, that I kind of grabbed from the life coach school, and you guys might have heard me talk about it, but she talks about this idea of your beliefs inform your thoughts, which inform your feelings, which inform your actions, which inform your results. Now, that's not exactly what she says, but that's kind of how I've broken it down. So beliefs impact your thoughts, which impact your feelings, which impact your actions, which impact your results. So if we really look, if we're not getting the results that we want, we need to take a little bit of a step back and look at the beliefs that we're believing or not believing, because that's going to make us feel a certain way or think a certain way. And ultimately, it's going to make us do certain things or say certain things that are going to get certain results. So you have to first believe that you deserve to be there, because if you believe that you deserve to be there, the thoughts that you're going to have or I have value. And if the thoughts that you have or I have value, then you're going to feel really good about yourself and confident. When you feel really good about yourself and confident, you are matter of fact about your accomplishments. You're not ashamed of them. You tell your story in a compelling way and you're not worried about the result actually, which is hysterical, right? You're not worried about closing the deal because you know that you can provide value. And if they can't see it and you're describing it in an authentic way, that's not up to you. That's up to them right? So you can almost take a hands-off approach to it. And the result often happens when you have that approach in an interview, a hands-up approach, you oftentimes will get the job. So first it has to start out with the belief to be, that you deserve to be there. The second piece of how to sell yourself in an interview is to tell stories. A lot of people think that to sell yourself in an interview, you have to rattle off all of your key accomplishments with all the quantificate, like quantitative metrics that affirm that you are the right person for the job. That's part of it. That's just an incomplete way to think about it. So first, you want to be thinking about all the stories that you have throughout your career. Stories sell, right? So telling a story allows you to sell yourself in a non-sleazy way because you're just sharing, sharing, right? You are serving, you are helping them understand a little bit more of your experience by sharing your story. So I usually recommend for most of my clients to write down like, okay, here's all your key accomplishments. What's the story attached to that? And being able to tell that in the tell that in an in an interview. So for instance, if they ask you, how would you handle risk? 
That's just a very generic question. Came up, I just came up with it on top of my head. How do you handle risk in your business? You would say, yes, let me tell you a story about a time when. And those are the types of things that really help differentiate you. It makes you memorable. And it also allows you to sell yourself without being sleazy. You're telling them how you've been able to do it in the past. And even if you don't have a specific story of how you've done something in the past, you can tell a story of how you would do it in the future. So telling a story is part of how to sell yourself in a non-sleazy way. The next piece of the puzzle is looking the part. So this is something I talk about with my women in my Recruit the Employer program. One of the first exercises I have them do is like, what does a successful career woman look like? And I don't mean just aesthetics. I mean, how does she present herself? What's her posture look like? Maybe what is she wearing? What does she care most about in terms of like, it's kind of that adage of dress for the job that you want, right? So when you're dressing for the job that you want, you also exude a confidence, right? And I tell women, I'm like, If you want to get your hair done, get your hair done. If you don't, if that makes you feel more authentic, then don't. But like, it's not about the actual physical appearance of somebody, right? It's about what makes you feel most confident. I know for myself, when I'm rocking a pair of heels and I put on some great lipstick and I am dressed for the day, I feel like a more confident businesswoman that can serve my clients best, right? So it's about looking the part and selling yourself in an interview is about looking for the part that you want. The next piece of how to sell yourself in an interview is to understand your audience. We talked about this a little bit with the what's in it for them. You need to understand who are the people in the room? What do they care about? How you are selling yourself to a hiring manager is going to look a little bit different than how you sell yourself to um, maybe a peer or to somebody that you're going to be managing. Those ways, their motivations are different. What they care about are different. And so it's your job to think from a psychological standpoint, what do they care about most? Maybe for a hiring manager, they really care about you making their life easier. Maybe it's for it's a peer, it's they want you to take make their life easier, right? Take some work off of their plate and they want to make sure you're going to be capable of doing it. And somebody who is um, maybe less, um, more junior rather to you, maybe they want to know that you're going to help lead them and help them expand forward and help them move up the ranks, right? You are going to help in some way. You're serving, right? So selling is not sleazy, it's serving. So really just understanding your audience and being able to speak to their motivations, which is, by the way, a great management skill, period. (laughs) So if you are a manager right now and you are trying to figure out how to lead people really well, understand people's motivations, understand what makes them tick. And in an interview, you can generally understand what's most important to them by their position in the company. Once you get to know them more in the workplace, then you're going to really understand what do they care about most, what's motivating them, who are they getting pressure from, and how do you mitigate that pressure, right? And then the last thing that I would really recommend is know your value proposition statement. (laughs) Selling yourself in an interview is all about what's the value you can bring. So you better know what it is that you have to offer to a company. Now, in my Recruit the Employer program, we talk about how to determine that through a job description before you enter into an interview, how to ask questions once you get into the interview to share to really get to the bottom of what is most important so that you can express your value proposition statement, which is essentially the answer to the question, tell me about yourself or why should we hire you? Know what that value proposition statement is. Because if you know that and you say that in a matter of fact way, you're going to be really, really compelling and you're going to be perceived as potentially the only person for the job. And then finally, the last piece, which I want to just add this one in here, is not to be too verbose. So a lot of people think that when selling yourself, you have to share all the things that you've ever done since you were like 12 years old. This is not your opportunity to share about your first jobs working at Auntie Anne's, which was mine. (laughs) This is not your opportunity. to. It's about sharing the things that are most relevant. Edit, edit, edit. The shorter and more succinct you can make it without coming across as being like short, short, like actually short, the better. So I was working with a woman recently and she's really impressive, has done amazing things in her career. She has all the degrees out the wazoo, but she just couldn't sell herself because she was talking so much that I was losing her. There wasn't structure to her answer. And so we really worked to solidify and like clean up what she was talking about to get to the heart of it. What is the main idea of what you can really bring value to this company and why would they hire you over some other candidate? And we get her thinking differently about how how she is presenting herself and how she's selling herself in an interview. So overall, I just want you to remember that when you're selling yourself, it doesn't mean you have to be sleazy. It doesn't mean you have to be inauthentic. It really, I want you to replace the word sell with serve. 
How are you serving? How are you bringing value? And once you like make that mindset shift, it becomes a lot easier to present yourself in an interview because you were just serving. Even in that interview, you're sharing your knowledge. You're sharing what you've been able to accomplish because you know that you're going to be able to do it again and do it even better for their company. Right? So part of that's the belief structure and selling is important because you won't be able to negotiate potentially as much as you deserve if you don't know how to sell yourself. So this is a skill that is going to help you throughout the entirety of your career, not just for when you're making a career change, when you're trying to get a promotion, when you're trying to become a manager, when you're trying to get other people underneath you, selling yourself is not just relevant when you are transitioning. It is relevant throughout every part of your career. So you want to get really good at doing this. And it's okay if you don't know how to do it. (laughs) No one taught you how to do it, right? And the last thing is it is possible to do it in a non-sleazy way. First, start with the belief, then understand your audience, explain what your value proposition statement is, and make sure that you're not being too verbose. So guys, this was a kind of a longer one for me. I just really wanted to give you kind of an overall picture of how to sell yourself in an interview because I feel like this is one of the most important, one of the things that people ask me the most about, but then also to really dive into what are some of the ways that you can actually do that. And hopefully I've been helpful in in helping to make you understand that. If you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, tell me what your biggest takeaway was from this episode. I would love to hear it. Make sure you connect with me there and I will see you next week. Hey y'all, thanks so much for listening to Your Career Story Podcast. I would love, 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 love to get to meet you. And there are a couple of ways that we can connect in between episodes. First and foremost, you know I love my LinkedIn. Second is via Instagram. And third is over on my website. I actually have a special spot just for you full of fun, free resources. So all you have to do is go to www.jennaviviano.com backslash resources. Super simple for a bunch of freebies that will help you boost your career. Hope to see you next week.